Hey everybody, it's Jodie here from Decorous Vintage Designs back today with another furniture painting tutorial to show you guys how to get this very rustic bohemian look. All right, to start with, I grabbed my water mister and Honky Tonk Red by Dixie Belle. Um, it doesn't really matter what brush you use for this part of the process. Um, I can't even remember what brush I used here, if I'm being totally honest. It looks like it might be the French chip brush. Um, but basically, I am just going to put this all around the edges. I'm going to mist a lot as well because it's really weird. It's a, it's one of the first days of spring and it feels like summer on this day. So I decided to lug this big linen closet outside and just enjoy painting in the sun. Sometimes when you paint in the sun, it can cause chalk paint to dry quickly. Um, but if you just make sure that the paint stays in the shade and you have a water mister to hand to keep misting, then you will find that, um, that it's absolutely fine painting in this kind of weather. At least it is in England anyway. As per usual guys, all the colours and products that I'm using today are listed below. If you're in the US, you can grab your Dixie Bell supplies from the links below. It is an affiliate link, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. Um, but I will earn a small commission and it just helps support me uh, create these videos. Also, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy this video, then also don't forget to give it a thumbs up and a comment. And also click that bell so that you're notified whenever I post a new video. All right, so back to the painting. So as I'm painting this, um, I am not being particularly careful about where I am placing my colours because it's going to be very rustic. I am now coming in with Daisy, which is a very, very bright yellow, um, and I am putting this in the middle panels. If it overlaps a little bit with the honky tonk red and goes around the edges, again, that is absolutely fine. What I am doing here is putting on a base layer. I am basically just blocking out colours getting the um, linen closet set up for my, um, you know, for the colours that I'm going to put over on the top of this. So don't worry if it's going to look like a hot crazy mess. It will look like a hot crazy mess for a while, but I promise you, as you could see in the first photo, uh, it will all be brought together in the end. I'm continuing with the daisy now on the top panels. You'll see in a mo. so the way this linen closet is set up is that it has a very big heavy top with lots of panels and then it sits on top, um, on top of a very heavy base which has a really deep drawer inside of it. So I'm just going to paint all of the top panels here in yellow Again, it doesn't really matter what brush you use. I am using the mini here just because I wanted a little bit of a smoother look than, um, than around the edges. I just wanted to make sure that the color was um, you know, put on there well and wasn't too scratchy at this point or anything. I just wanted a full base. It's also, I just want to mention that I won't show, show it on this tutorial today, but I did go in there with two coats of Daisy. All right, okay, so this is the bottom of the piece. So it has honky tonk red around the edges. I now have the scarlet brush and I am painting this in Flamingo, which is a lovely pink blush kind of color, uh, coral color. Again, not too worried about those edges. It's going to overlap a little bit into the honky tonk red and that is absolutely fine. And again, it doesn't massively matter what brush you use. I am just telling you, just in case you're interested. And I will go in with a second coat. All right, so it's, everything's drying super quickly, obviously, obviously because the weather is hot today. So I have put two coats of Flamingo on there now and now I have um, Dixie Belle Blue, which is a very, very soft baby blue color. As I paint this, um, again, it doesn't really matter what brush you use. I can't even remember what brush I'm using here again. I'm so sorry. It is a synthetic brush. That's all I can tell you. Um, and I am not covering all of the coral up. There's going to be little bits of coral peeking through around the edges and around the pulls. And that's absolutely fine. And again, it's just going to overlap. So now I have Peacock. And I do have the French tip brush for this just because I want to get into all those details at the top. But that's the only reason I'm using a French tip brush. I also would recommend using a nat natural bristled brush for around the edges if you want that texture because natural bristles create more texture and just makes it a little bit more scratchy. So the honky tonk red obviously went around the 
the outside edges now this is going to go around the inner edges the peacock will again overlap over the other colors and that is absolutely fine I want this to look like it's had lots of colors and all those colors are peeling away and I want it to have a very very summery rustic Moroccan vibe so the way to do this is by not being perfect you've got to get out of your head and you've just got to get those colors on there I only went in with one layer of honky tonk red and the peacock. This is because I know I'm going to be going in there with lots and lots of different colors over the top. So I am happy that I'm gonna have good coverage in the end. As you can see here, as I paint the top, um, I am letting a lot of the honky tonk red peek through. You can see I'm not being perfect in any way. It is just a very, very intuitive thing. And at the same time, it's, it can be really, really hard to be random, but while um, also not being overly random, if that makes sense. And it can be really hard to, if you, especially if you have a little bit of OCD about things, um, it can be a little bit hard to uh, not be perfect and not overthink it. But honestly, just these two colors are completely contrasting. You, they're not two colors you would normally think to put together, but they will work in the end. And you may be thinking right now, well, they are totally contrasting. How how on earth is this going to be brought together and look good? And um, who is it that wears red and blue? Is it Wear Wally or, or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> There's some kind of cartoon character that wears red and blue, but I can't think who they are right now. But yes, anyway, so I'm putting a little bit of peacock, which is a lovely warm medium blue around the edge of the drawers as well. And um, again, I am going to let some of that honky tonk peek through. All right, so I'm going in with yet another color um, over the top of uh, these drawers, and this is Mint Jalep. Um, again, I'm using a synthetic brush. Don't worry about your, whatever brushes you use for this, honestly. I would just, just use whatever you have in your arsenal. Um, so yes, I'm using Mint Jalep over the top, and just like I did before, I'm overlapping it, and I'm also letting some of the other colors peek through as well. And then on the top panels, <laughs> I'm coming in with some Dixie Belle Blue. It is just called Blue. It's just called Dixie Belle Blue. And yeah, and I'm just doing the exact same thing. Um, oh, please, sorry guys, excuse me. This is not Dixie Belle Blue. This is the Gulf, sorry, that I was using there. And I'm putting some of the Gulf on the main panels there as well. I'm just following the exact same process. I am not covering. I'm not going to cover all of the Flamingo. Um, you can also see some of the Daisy posts poking through there in the, on the right panel as well. So this is what's happening here is that all of these colors are just going to kind of peek through. So one thing I also want to mention guys is um, I have just moved into a brand new workshop. Obviously the lighting is very good here because I'm outside and hopefully I can be outside a lot more in the summer. Um, I have a Google Pixel 4 phone which is meant to be, it's a fantastic camera but it's one of the best cameras out there but I have since found out the uh, pixel does not um, calibrate light very well. So this, what this means is that when I speed up videos, there's a lot of fluctuations in light, especially um, especially when it's dark, which can be quite frustrating. But I am working on getting a professional video camera, but just please bear with me. It will take me time, but I will get there eventually. Okay, what we have here now is the Colourful Tiles Deco Page Paper, which is one of the brand new rice papers from Dixie Belle. And I have cut it in half and I am putting some clear top coat in flat to start with. I like to use the flat because I prefer matte looks. I'm not really into shimmer. I am then just measuring it up and I'm just rubbing that decoupage paper out. If you want a smoother look, you can use an iron, but I quite like the crinkles. It's just, I think it adds to the rusticness. Um, and then I am just going to go over again with some clear top coat. This rice paper, while it is very, very soft and easy to move, it is also extremely strong. It's quite surprising actually. So it can handle a lot of moisture. So I am not being shy about how much top coat I'm using. And I'm also making sure that I get it into the corners as well. Um, just make sure that you seal all of the, all of the decoupage paper down. Apart from the bits that you obviously want to um, cut off. 
so it's up to you you can also cut it to size before you put it on um, your furniture if you're like me and you're not a massive fan of measuring you can just get some sandpaper like I am here and then just very very gently give the edges a sand and then you will see that the edges start to pull away Okay, so there we go. So you can see, you can also use a Stanley knife. Again, for some reason, I'm really rubbish with Stanley knives, but um, you can use a Stanley knife if you want to for a cleaner cut. But again, because it's going to be rustic, um, I'm not, and because, you know, I've made my own method work for me and um, because I do like rustic, you know, the rustic look, I can get away with using sandpaper. Um, but yes, it, if you want a smoother look, then measure to size beforehand or maybe use a Stanley knife and also an iron if you want a smooth look. Okay, so next up is the Western Boho um, silk screen stencil and also cotton. I love silk screen stencils because you don't get any bleed through with them um, and also they, you just stick them down and paint. They are so, so easy to use. Um, again, I'm being quite rough here because I'm just trying to build up textures and patterns and things. Um, and I'm just going to keep continuing this pattern downwards. So I've almost got a stripe down the side of this and it's just a very, very subtle way to get the, um, you know, to add to this boho look that I'm going for here. I just want to say as well that this part was painted live and so is a part later on. The other thing that I have decided I'm going to do is that um, I have weekly lives on Thursday mornings on the Dixie Bell page um, and what I've decided is I am going to dedicate a one piece of furniture each month to those lives um, and then I will be painting a separate piece each week for my YouTube tutorials and that way I won't have to splice in the lives. All right, so again, I'm just building more texture and interesting things, I guess, here. <laughs> and I have some watered down mermaid tail. It's probably around a 50-50 solution, uh, maybe even a 70% will uh, go on. Yes, no, let's just say 50-50 solution. That's probably easier um, because I don't measure. Um, it just I just go on how it kind of looks and feels. So as you can see there, we're getting some drips going now. Um, and then next up, what I will get is at my water mister and I am just going to soften up some of these spindly parts of the drips a little bit, um, just because I don't want them looking that thick. However, what you will find as well when you create drips with watered down paint um, is that when it dries, they dry a tiny little bit translucent, so they won't look as harsh or as thick as what they do here. All right, so now I have some Florida orange and I also have a chip brush. This is a premium chip brush, but Dixie Belle also do some basic ones, which um, also work absolutely fine. So I'm just going around the edges here in some random areas and I am just dry brushing on some Florida orange. You don't have to think too much about this. I am just layering colors at this point. Um, yeah, I'm just layering colors because what I want is I want to add loads and loads of colors and build those colors up um, and I want contrasting colors and things so that eventually when I bring it all together and I sand it all back, I will just have lots of little colors peeking through. So if it goes back to that thing of don't worry about being perfect, just get the colors on there and have a play and then sand them all back and you will, you will see great results honestly. So hopefully you can see here is that I am leaving lots of gaps between the Florida orange and I'm also bringing some into the panels there. So it, it will feel strange, especially if you're the kind of painter that paints, as I say, very perfect kind of finishes. It will feel strange just to add lots of random color in random places. Um, but I promise you it's really, really fun. And it's the best way to get a rustic look, especially a bohemian rustic look. All right, so now I'm coming in with some Daisy. You probably think, what on earth is this girl doing? And don't you think the Florida orange underneath actually makes it, gives it a bit of a burnt look? I quite like that. So now I'm coming in with some Daisy. Again, I am dry brushing. So what that means is I'm putting a tiny little bit of my brush and just rubbing it off um, to highlight certain areas. And again, I am just putting this in random places and making sure all those colors look crazy and overlapped. 
All right, so this part was painted live as well. So now I have rustic red. Um, I'm, I'm flitting around here a little bit. Um, so yes, I have rustic red and this is a very, very warm red compared to the honky tonk red. It has probably a little bit more brown in it, whereas honky tonk red probably has more blue. And by that, I just mean it's a much cooler, um, brighter red than the rustic. So I am now wanting to bring this whole piece together Everything's completely dry, so I am going to put quite a bit of um, rustic red on here. I am still going to be dry brushing it, so I'm dry brushing like all around the edges there. I am still leaving a lot of the colours poking through, um, and I'm still focusing this on the outer edges, but it is going to be my main colour. So can you see that there is still some blue peeking through at the top, we've got yellow and orange peeking through on the edges there, and I'm just going to bring this downwards. So I'm basically, um, sorry, I'm just going to bring it downwards in the middle of the doors, I, I meant to say. So all I'm doing here is kind of copying what I did, um, you know, to begin with. I was going to come in again with a honky-tonk red, but I just felt that might be a little bit too too bright and I just felt like a warmer red would be a little bit softer and you know would work better in bringing it together so that's why I decided to go for a warmer red um, and then I'm coming back in now with my peacock because it is just a really warm rich blue I absolutely love peacock it's so versatile and works with lots and lots of different colours um, so yeah and then again just like I did to start with I am focusing the peacock more around the inner edges just to start to bring these colours together a little bit, making sure that I'm dry brushing and that I am also allowing some of the colours to peek through that are underneath as well. What I'm doing here also, I just want to show you dry brushing up close. So this is the extreme end of dry brushing where I just have a tiny, tiny little bit on my brush. And this is Dixie Belle Blue again. And I'm just focusing this around some of the edges because it, it, this is a really light blue compared to all the other colours I've used. Um, and that's just going to help give this one look. When dry brushing, if you do happen to find that you've used a little bit too much paint, don't worry, you can fix this either by using a damp rag, you know, a little bit of water to wipe away because Dixie Belle is a water-based paint, or you can just continue to brush it out with your chip brush. Okay, this is entirely dry now and I have some sandpaper and it's time to really, really let this piece shine. So I have some 120 grit sandpaper. If you want, just because I want it to create some scratches, if you want a scratchier look, you could even, even go for a 80 grit. If you want a softer look, then maybe go for like a 200 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to sand this whole piece now. And then if you find as you're sanding that you get a little surprise of a colour like this peeking through, then just sand it a little bit more. Um, and what sanding also will do is it will just help to bring this all together. So whereas we had blocks of colours before, this is going to make the colours look more natural and realistic um, and authentically worn. And also it's going to allow some of the wood grain to poke through to get that really rustic chippy look. So if you see here, we have a bunch of colour going on. So I'm going to sand this now and then you'll see that it just softens it all up. Um, and now it's time to soften it up even more and add a little bit of drama. So I'm coming in now with Best Dang Waxing Clear and this is going to be my base and I am applying this everywhere. And then I'm coming in with black wax and I'm focusing this around the edges. I'm putting the black wax thicker in the corners and at the outer edges um, and then a little bit softer in some areas. Just to, This is going to help it look really, really aged and rustic. And by having the colours darker in some areas, it's just going to, again, look more realistic. I put a little bit too much white wax on my brush there, but this is white wax and I'm focusing white wax in the middle panels. I just want to say that I sanded the middle panels down as well. Um, um, and white wax is fantastic for um, softening colours as well. It will just help subdue the tone of them a little bit more, so it kind of just dials down the contrast, if that makes sense, um, and it does also help them to age. 
Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys. This has been amazing to work on. I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, if you have any feedback or comments or questions, I reply to all the comments. So please drop me a comment below and also let me know if you've tried a look like this before or if you want to try a look like this. I would be interested to hear that as well. But have a lovely day, guys, and happy painting. Bye-bye.